Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Today, obviously, you've got me, Anastasia Best Law Properties, and I have David Cantero joining me as well with Inspired Digital. We are so happy to be here and be masterminding with you all today. Yes. We're excited for this one. This is going to be a different kind of style. We've decided we're not doing that official interview style. It just doesn't fit us. We are just going to be here masterminding with you guys like we do on the regular, but you guys are going to get a glimpse of that today. So super excited to have you here, David. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. It's an honor. It's a pleasure. And I'm always fired up when I'm talking to you. Yeah. Always something new when it comes to marketing, business, and all the above. Like we have some great conversations, so I'm fired up. We really do. And that's really, that's how you and I connected was over the marketing kind of standpoint of things and um, really leaning into some of the more digital grabbing people's attention virtually. Um, because as realtors, we all know that we kind of lack in that area a little bit. And that's what you specialize in is helping realtors to um, start to bring that virtual attention to themselves and what they bring to the table. And so that's really, you know, where it all began. And then it's just snowballed in this awesome friendship talking about all real estate things, I think, you know? Yes, right. It started, it started there. It started with us connecting on, on Facebook, right? On our personal pages. And, and that's where a lot of my connections come. Like um, when it comes to my personal page, my whole thing was to network with real estate agents and just to fill up that 5,000 list with, with nothing but agents. And so it all started there. And before you know it, we're, we're connecting and, and giving each other advice and, 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 and really now taking your whole brand, both of our brands, really, we're both in the trenches. We're both, you know, in the, in, 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 in on the battlefield doing, doing this together. Right. So you're going that whole real estate route. I'm trying to really bring value to that real estate route. And so, yeah, when we connect the pieces, it, it's just, it's just an, an exciting time to be in your field, but to, mm -hmm. but to also bring that whole entire energy to social media. And as I started connecting with a lot of people, a lot of agents specifically on my personal Facebook page, I just, I just noticed that a lot of them, you know, were local, right? You being a, a business owner. Now, today you can, you can build virtually, right? Social media, it's, it's, a, it's a global thing, but most realtors are, are still local, right? Your dream client is down, is down the street, right? That dream listing is next door, right? It's mm -hmm. not always in another state. So when it comes to what I started seeing on, on my personal page was just a lot of real estate agents marketing to a global market, which could be cool because, again, you never really know where your next client's coming from. They could be coming from anywhere. They could be coming from any state, any country. But again, I just truly believe coming from the industry, being in mortgages, I know that that dream client is locally. So when I started seeing a lot of agents just marketing and just kind of throwing spaghetti against the wall to see what, what sticks. I just knew that I can bring value. And really the value is, is targeting like local targeting. That's where the energy should be going. Right. And so it's, it's Facebook advertising, it's Instagram advertising, it's getting the attention of your local audience. That's my whole passion. And that's my whole value proposition what, on what I try to bring, you know, that, that agent. And so by having thousands of them on, on my personal page, I just see it time and time again, where everyone's just marketing to whoever and anyone and, and, and as I reach out and as I reached out to you, I'm like, Anastasia, there is a better, a better way, right? There is a better way. And it's, it's actually easier than you, than you, than you can imagine. And, and that's really advertising. You know, it's all about traffic. It's all about advertising at the end of the day. And so after speaking to thousands of agents, a lot of them try to advertise, especially on Facebook specifically, um, their ads will get rejected for whatever reason, or they don't, they don't really know the full process of it. There's a lot that goes into it. And as you and I have been through many calls now, custom audiences, custom conversions, landing pages, putting your pixel on your page. These are all basic fundamentals of the Facebook ad platform. But again, most agents, what I found, don't do it. They'll simply mm -hmm. boost a post and wonder why leads didn't come in when none yeah. of that back end is ever set up. You know, so you and I, we've just been through many calls where now, now you're in position to really take over and, mm -hmm. and really dominate that area. But in your case, that's why, that's why I love, you know, what, what you're doing, because you're not just building that local business owner. And that's why, you know, as I really start to, to expand my business, you got me inspired to, to go out there and even get my license. I, I was a loan officer for six years in, in mortgages, but now after speaking to you and after really masterminding, it's like, shit, I might as well go get my license as well, because what you guys are doing with exp specifically you have many many other opportunities and that's what we should talk about you know what what's really the difference 
because I'm still learning that whole, you know, EXP comp plan structure as well myself, but I, I, I fully understand it. And so after speaking to thousands of agents and knowing that they don't have all these benefits that, that you have with this specific company, that's what we should talk about. You know, what, what are really the differences between EXP and, and why EXP, you know, and, and because that, that's really me being an entrepreneur, I'm going to, I'm going to just be upfront. It's like, it's all about the bag. It's all about how can I financially secure my family, my, our, our future. And, and I just, and, and I know for a fact that most agents don't have that backup plan. They don't have that security, that financial security. They don't have that retirement. Most of them don't have anything saved. And, and I know this from personal, you know, experience, right? Being in mortgages, I, 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 I that's how I know your side of the business very well is because I, I spent six years as a lender. So yeah. knowing that most, and even us in mortgages, it's like, man, I would get these big paychecks, but damn, I'd be at the mall after work. You're not know, mm-hmm. blowing it on stupid stuff, not even putting anything away. And then having yeah. to worry about taxes on the other hand, it's like, shit, no wonder most are broke, you know? Yeah. So with you, after speaking to you and, and really just inspiring me, I'm like, damn, maybe I should go get my license and, and, and really start bringing value that way as well, because I know a lot of agents, not only do, can they use help with the social media marketing side of their business, but it's like, man, I truly believe most are probably in the wrong brokerage. Most are probably working with the wrong company. And mm-hmm. so let's touch on that. Like, why, why, don't, why don't you just kind of give us your, your background? Like, what led, what led you to real estate to begin with? Why EXP? And, and what's the difference? You know, what's the difference between every company? Because... No, I, I hate using the word saturated, but at the same time, there's 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 a couple million realtors just in our country alone, and I I believe everyone's everywhere, and it's like man, narrow it in. I truly believe yeah. EXP has something different than most companies, than ninety nine percent of every company. So what's the difference? Sure. You know what's the difference? You're you're what led you to to the industry? Why what's EXP? Why EXP? And and really, what's the difference? So um, I actually got into real estate because I, um, I, you know, I mean, I always liked houses. I love, everybody loves HGTV. Um, mm-hmm. That is the, you know, guide to what real estate is like. But, you know, it always kind of piqued my interest. I was in dentistry for 11 years and um, pregnant with my daughter. And I got laid off. Mm-hmm. In that moment, I thought, you know what? I don't ever want to be dependent on somebody else for keeping a roof over my head, for putting Mm -hmm. in my pocket and in my bank account for me and my child. I just don't ever want to do that. So I got laid off and in the middle of applying for jobs, trying to find something else, I decided I'm going to take this course and I am going to just kill it, right? So I crammed this course, a 90 hour course into two weeks. Wow. I just went to town on it. And, um, I thought, you know what, I have to do this. This is what I, you know, it just, it has to happen at this point. So, you know, take the course, get my real estate license, fast forward. Um, I was starting to feel burned out. I think really like most agents, right? You know, I just got to the point where I was like, I'm tired. It's not fueling my fire. I just, it's not what I thought it was going to be. And transactions are exhausting, you know, selling homes, have, working with buyers, it just gets exhausting. Um, you're giving so much of yourself and your energy to find these things. And it's the biggest purchase someone's going to make in their life. So you have to make it great. At least in my opinion, I was like, it's got to be a great experience. I want it to be fun. I want it to be good. All of those things for somebody, right? Mm-hmm. And it's draining me. And I got to the point where I'm like, I feel like I'm just stagnant. Like I'm not going where I want to go. I had all these big visions of what I could become and what this would become for me. And it just wasn't happening. And I didn't want to be that person. I didn't want to be the agent that didn't love what they were doing and have that passion and that fire in them. Because I think people feel that, right? You know, they feel your energy. What you put out in the world is what you're going to get back from the world. And I just wasn't putting good energy out there anymore. So followed. So what year was this? This was um, just last year, actually. Wow. For me. Yep. And so I, you know, I started looking at other brokerage models, interviewed with some, some local box, big box name brokerages, and it still wasn't what I wanted exactly. I had already built a brand. I built Best Washington Properties, invested tens of thousands of dollars into that brand, um, mm. you know, websites and things like that. 
And um, I was just like, this, this isn't it. And so I started looking at the other ones. They weren't going to fulfill where I wanted to go with this. My goal is to build a big brand, right? To build out into and to saturate into other market, markets, not just my local market. Um, and so really, I started just kind of checking things out. I started following my upline, um, Gogo, started following her, followed her for about six months. I think it was actually longer than that. I think it was about nine months, followed her. And um, then I touched base with a local EXP agent here. And I'm like, all right, we knew each other, you know, and we were doing a deal together. And I said, tell me, how is this real? Like, is it really real? Yeah. The downfall. And he's like, I'm telling you, there isn't one. And I was like, come on, there is one. There's always one. And he's like, I'm telling you, if there is, I haven't found it yet. And he's been with EXP for years. I'm like, okay. So I at the end of last year, decided, you know what, I'm going to make this switch and do the jump. I'm going to just, I'm going to basically close my eyes and just do it because I didn't want to be, there's like, it's 82% of agents that fall, drop off. They don't make it. They just drop off. I didn't want to be that statistic. And so I decided, okay, here we go. I'm going to jump into it. I'm going to do this. I moved over to EXP and I'll tell you my one regret. The only one I've got, I didn't do it soon enough. Not only have I found my fire, but I figured out what my passion is. I've let transactions take a back seat for me while I sit here and build a team. I'm building out internationally. And that's what this has given me is that ability. I don't have to look at what can I do within, you know, my local market? What can I do within Washington state? My furthest business partner is in North Carolina. And we've got other international business partners, you know, one that joined us from France. And so it no longer became a drop in a bucket, you know, um, we really are, you know, just taken over. And the thing that I think makes us so different is that I want to work out into other markets and I want to, I want to build out really specifically Arizona, but Hey, North Carolina now too. Um, and I started looking and every other brokerage, it was like, well, you're going to have a cap in each location that you're at. If you carry a license in that state, you're going to have a different cap there. You're going to have the fees for that, you know, different state. Mm -hmm. I'm like, nobody could ever make money doing this. This is not even possible. Nope. Here comes EXP. And we all get, we have one cap, no matter where I work, no matter what market I'm in, I have the same $16,000 cap for every single state. So I could be licensed in 10 states, and still only have a $16,000 cap. Can you explain that? What, what exactly is a cap? When you're selling real estate, you have a split, right? So the brokerage, you're under the brokerage. And so um, you have a split with the brokerage for every transaction. And it's, at, so at EXP, it's 80-20. Um, you have that split up until you pay into the company X amount of dollars. So for us, it's 16000 most places are 20, 25. I know other box name brokerages are trying to keep up now. And so they're dropping those down, but ours is 16. So I pay up to $16,000 in every transaction that split 20% goes to EXP up until that $16,000. And then from that point forward, I make a hundred percent of that transaction. Wow. Wow. Any longer. Yeah. So, and that cap is super low in comparison. Like I said, though, some are, you know, trying to compete with us at this point now, but in comparison, it's still low and I can work out of any state I want to. That wasn't even possible. So that's game changing with, with, your, with, with your transactional cells or with your team. So if you recruited someone, for example, in Arizona, like, are you talking about that? Are you, what are you? With my own transactional sales. Your own. So you could do a deal, a personal deal in any state? Mm -hmm. As long as I'm licensed in that state. But yeah, but you got to be licensed in that state. Mm -hmm. But yeah. after you're already licensed, getting um, licensed in other states becomes much easier. And so the it's not the same guidelines as your initial license. Mm -hmm. I'm licensed here. I have like Michigan, for instance, I could easily go and get licensed in Michigan and it would not, it would not be a big deal at all. 
uh, most of our agents actually have started going in and getting licensed at other places. A lot of them, you know, we have two, three, four states that these agents are licensed in now because they can be and still make money, you know? And so they're getting licensed in Florida and California and New York and, you know, covering different, different places because they can. Um, and so, so what if you were building a team? I'm so sorry, but you're going to have, I, I'm going to have questions that just pop up. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, this stuff just fires me up what you're saying. So what if you actually built, built a team? Like, so you're, you're out there in Washington, I'm out here in California. And I, what if I started going out there and getting deals and, and, and even building my own team, mm-hmm. would you have to be licensed in this state to make those overrides or whatever? No, no. And that's the beauty of it is that, um, at EXP, we do, it's a sponsorship. So if you were to go get licensed, I would sponsor you as an agent and you would join my crew. It's not an official team. You would join my downline. Mm -hmm. In order for me to make money, you have to be successful. You have to be making money because we, it's revenue sharing. And so based on the revenue the company is making, they pay me. But if you're not selling anything, I'm getting zero dollars out of dollars. So I'm not making any money. So my end goal is to make you as successful as you possibly can be, because that's what makes me the money. So if you're down there, you go get licensed. I sponsor you at EXP. You're selling just, you know, killing it down there in that market, which of course you will. Um, If that's Mm -hmm. happening, then I'm making 3.5% of those transactions that you're selling, but only up until you hit that cap. After you cap, then I'm not making anything because the company's not making anything anymore. Um, And so- EXP actually pays us. And that's what's so different from, you know, there's other brokerages that do profit sharing and things like that. Well, you're getting pennies in comparison because it's based on the company's profit, not the actual revenue. The company and has. who knows what that profit really is. And at the same right. time, if I was the owner of a company, I'm writing off everything. So I don't show right. as much profit. So it's like, yeah, yeah. that part doesn't even make sense financially right right? so yeah which is why they're getting pennies in comparison to us you know i mean i've joined i've been less than a year at exp now i have been on track making around four figures on my revenue share that is game changing like what that i don't just on the people that that are on your team your downline or whatever you want to call it just on that that's the revenue share Mm -hmm. yep because i and I've taken a step back from my transactional real estate because I'm devoted to seeing them be successful. I'm devoted to making sure that they're getting deals, to making sure that they're closing because that's their goals. Everybody has their own different goals. You know, I, everybody on my team, that's the first thing we talk about is, hey, what's your goal? You know, mm-hmm. what do you want to do here? Um, because everybody's is different. My goal was to step back from transactional real estate. And I've been successful in doing that. Do I still sell homes? Of course I do. But is that my main focus? No, my main focus is making sure that all of them are successful and selling as many homes as they desire to sell. Because that's what makes money and puts it in my pocket. So do you have a personal quota? Like, are you, are you required by eXp, for example, to, to actually have X amount of personal deals per year? So you can come in and not oh, even nothing. not even do one transaction in a, in a given 12 month period, for example, but have a team yeah. on fire, freaking selling the hell out of the whole damn country and you're yeah. overriding all that. And that's actually my goal. So my, I'm still in transactions now. My goal within the next three years is to be doing this many transactions. That is my, my goal in the next three years. I don't want to be doing that. I want to see them because them doing that. Because if I'm doing those deals really from my local agents, I'm taking those deals away from them then. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When I have so many other things, people think that there's this, you know, it's the umbrella of real estate, right? People think that all there is underneath that umbrella is you sell homes, you help people buy homes, and maybe a few over here think you build a a traditional team and you take, Mm -hmm. you know, traditional team, you're taking a cut from those agents. Usually it's 50%. Sometimes people take 60%. I never wanted to do that. I don't want to take food from my people's tables because I know how important it is to feed your family, right? I want everybody eating. And so people think that under this umbrella, that's all that there is. And they get boxed into that idea instead of looking and going, 
Real estate can be so much more. It doesn't have to be just buying and selling in teams. What if it could be, and it can, what if it could be that we focus more on helping agents with success, you know, helping them learn how to close deals, helping them with attracting agents, you know, building out programs that help with those things. What if it was you focus more on investment properties, picking up, you know, flips, doing rentals, mm -hmm. things, bringing in those kind, that kind of money, or that, you know, you're getting ownership in a brokerage and revenue sharing in a brokerage and that you're making money there. Because to me, I don't want to be out here pounding the pavement the rest of my life. I want to be able to make some passive income. And that's what this gave me. There are so many other options. I don't have to compete with agents anymore because I know that yeah. it's all coming. There's enough for everybody. And so that's really the great thing is that it's changed my whole perspective. I got boxed in just like most do into this idea of what it needed to be. And it doesn't have to be that. Like once I decided I wasn't going to be fitting into that box anymore, okay. and the ideas just start pouring in. You start masterminding with people, start connecting and collaborating, and you'll be amazed the things you come up with that still actually fit underneath the umbrella of real estate. I'm still a real estate agent, you know, but I don't have to be boxed in anymore. See, and that, that's a complete, like, game changer i hate using the word game changer because it's so played out it's so burnt like mm -hmm. game changer right but it's like i don't know what other other word to use when it comes to exp like to be able to bring that model because here's my whole thing when i came into entrepreneurship in in 1999 which was 20 21 years ago i came in knowing and learning not knowing i came in learning that model the mm -hmm. exp model today in, 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 in another industry that's called network marketing, multi-level, there's many different words for it. I came in to entrepreneurship, learning that industry first, and it blew my mind. And I was always a fan because I learned leverage. It's not all about your personal sales. You have to go out there and build leverage. And, and leverage is built in many different ways, but that's where it started for me is, is, is knowing and learning that type of leverage where you have to leverage people which, which are, which are most of the time it's, it's called an employee. So you're the mm -hmm. owner, you have an employee, that's a form of leverage, or you have real estate, right? You have rental income, you have apartment buildings, you have, you have real estate, that's a form of leverage. Um, or you have money at work, right? You have money invested and, and, and that's a form of leverage. So I understood leverage in the very, very beginning, right? And so as mm -hmm. I'm building my different businesses in my early twenties and, and into my twenties, um, that whole concept never left me. Like I was always trying to figure out how, what different companies are around. And again, typically, traditionally, they're network marketing companies. They're supplement companies, vitamin companies, weight loss companies, things of that nature. And these are companies that are very, very successful. These are companies that do billions of dollars. But network marketing was always a, it was always looked upon, it was always looked looked down upon, right? Like people would always call it a pyramid or or something illegal. When little do they know, these are billion dollar companies. Like these are companies that bring tremendous amount of value to to the marketplace and to people. So that concept, that's why today when I now and even when I did mortgages, like I never even knew of EXP. Like I didn't even know of EXP until I started consulting you guys, which was a few years ago, because I started getting clients, you know, that were with EXP. XP. Um, and, and I never even knew about it. Even when I was in mortgages, I had, I had no clue, but, but where I started in, in 99 with, with entrepreneurship and, and knowing this kind of leverage and then fast forwarding, fast forwarding into 2010, when, which is when I got into mortgages, I also knew that to have, to have leverage, I was going to have to leave that broker that I was with to eventually go start my own. And that's traditionally what happens in real estate, right? You're working with a broker and, be, and, and, and you're that beginner agent. And when you really get badass and you really learn the game, what do you typically do? You leave that broker and go become his competition or her competition and go build your own team. And so where I was at in mortgages, 2010 to 2016, I was actually in business with my best friend. It was my best friend who brought me in, took me under his wings and taught me everything about real estate and mortgages. And to this day, he owns the company. To this day, they do hundreds of millions in volume in mortgages. Very, very successful company here in San Diego to this day. 
but my run was that six year six my 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 whole run was six years and there's there's three reasons and there's a reason why i'm even bringing this story up and it, and it all ties back to leverage because there's three reasons why i left mortgages in in 2016 one reason was because well really the first reason was because i was burnt out because my whole entire time was all about sales and it was all about my personal effort and I got burnt out. So just like you in the beginning last year, you're like, damn, is this all there is? Like, it's, is it all about transactional sales? And, and you can apply that to anything and everything, anything and everything. Most sales comes down to you personally, right? That transactional sell, if you don't get up, you don't eat, right? If you don't make that deal, if you don't close that deal, you don't eat. And, and again, consulting agents, I know that 99%, that's the comp plan that you guys are in. If you don't close that escrow, you don't eat. You have absolutely zero leverage. So when I was in mortgages, it's the same structure, right? I'm the loan officer. He's the broker, right? So it's the same model. And I got burned out. I'm like, damn, I can't keep doing this. And at that time, my little boy was, was, was two years old, three years old. And so I was, I was a full-time dad, sharing him with with his mom right that's my ex-wife today but we're we're the best of friends so it's all good so i don't have that horror story when it comes to exes and stuff like that but but at that point i'm like damn i gotta go spend time with my family i gotta go spend time with my son like i gotta pick him up after school i gotta be home at at, at, i gotta be at home at at a certain time to do to do to do laundry to do homework to cook dinner this is my little first boy this is my first son right and so that transactional me having to always chase that next client that was one reason why i got burnt out because i, I i've been doing that at that point i started in 99 entrepreneurship and it was sell 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 sells Yes, I was introduced to network marketing and that concept, but I never really succeeded at it. I was always in different type of sales businesses, but I got burnt out. So by the time 2016 came around, I was burnt out on, on traditional sales and having to rely on my personal effort. I was burnt out. The second reason why I left was because I knew traditionally in the industry, I knew that the only way that I was going to create leverage is if I left my best friend, which owned the company, if I left him and went to go start my own, I would have had to do that. And I wasn't going to do that to him, right? He was my best friend. Still to this day, he's my best friend. Like I wasn't going to backstab him and say, hey, man, thanks for teaching me everything. Now I'm going to go start my own freaking Cantero lending and I'm going to go compete, right? That's traditionally what happens in, in, in real estate, right? You Again, you become that badass agent. You end up leaving and starting your own brokerage and competing with the people that brought you up. Right. I wasn't going to be that guy. But so that was the second reason why I had to think of something different, because I wasn't going to compete with him and, 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 and go start my own my own little deal. Right. And then the third reason was 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 this me was was me personally, where I was like, man, I understand leverage and I understand that I'm going to have to have people at work working for me so I can have a little bit of breathing room to have leverage. Right. So what does that mean? If I left my my friend and started my own brokerage, what, what, what would I have had to do? I would have had to go out there and, and recruit and hire other LOs to mm -hmm. come work for me. Mm -hmm. But that whole traditional business model was not what I wanted. I didn't want a big office. I didn't want all that overhead because I've experienced that before. I didn't want all those employees. Mm -hmm. I didn't want that liability. I did not want that traditional responsibility of a typical business, a brick and motor type of business, because that's what my friend has today. It's that traditional office, right? A lot of you guys listening to this real estate agents or whatnot, you guys are in traditional offices, some of you working from home, but it's still that traditional office, right environment. So that was the third reason I'm like, man, to create leverage, I don't want employees, like I don't want an overhead, I don't want this big office, like I don't want I don't want any of this stuff. So that's why when I'm like now looking at today, 2021, 2021, now I'm looking at what you guys got going on. I'm like, damn, that form of leverage, having a team, which are not your employees, being able to build a nationwide and even global team without having to call any of them an employee or take on any liability or rent a big ass office that you can't afford, right? Instead of taking on all that traditional overhead pain, you can build something today in this industry of real estate, which I happen to freaking love, and, and, and you can build leverage. And that's what it's mm -hmm. all about, man, is that I knew I knew that it wasn't going to happen traditionally. I wasn't going to backstab my friend and go do something on, on, on the side. And I didn't want that traditional 
leverage of employees. Um, mm-hmm. and, 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 and so what you guys have going on is special. It's so, it's so special because again, it, it brings, it brings it back to why you're even here. You're here. Mm-hmm. Cause you got a little baby. You're here. Cause you want to be at home with that little girl. You're here. Yeah. Cause you're a full-time mom. That's why you're here with EXP to build that leverage, to be able to, 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 to be able to reap the benefits of that, all that labor and pour your passion into teaching people because here's the deal all you agents that are watching this you guys have the passion of real estate anyways you have the passion i talked to some passionate ass people anastasia like i'm not joking my clients are freaking shout out to every single client of mine because every agent i speak to they're freaking fired up they're passionate they love what they do but at the same time they do have the fact they 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 don't have the leverage right they're working with the traditional brokerage and they don't have that form of leverage that we're talking about so they are stuck to to a certain extent for sure they they can't get out of it at all because they're chasing the next deal so when i when i when i look at it all i'm like dude you're already fired up about real estate. You already love what you do. You see the passion or the vision and, 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 and just the overall wealth that it can even bring if you really grind hard. Why not go build it in something like this? Like, why not go and get, get the opportunity to build it with an EXP, for example, where you can build this kind of leverage? Like, because again, the last thing anybody needs is an employee. The last thing you want today is an office. We all saw what happened to these offices. A lot of them are vacant today. So shit, if you want an office, go rent one. I'm sure there's plenty available today, but that traditional model is dead. That traditional model is dead. To be able to build something virtually, to be able to build something online, to be able to build a team of people, because again, leverage people, they, that, 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 that's, that's where it's all at, right? That connection of people, that's where leverage comes from. To be able to build that and not have to carry liability or responsibility of anyone, it's like, damn, Anastasia, your team's going to go so big. You're going to grow so big where you're going to have people in other states. You're going to have people in other countries that you don't even freaking know doing mm-hmm. deals. Like, I love that, man. Like, I love that leverage. That's what everybody needs. So it's like all you guys that are watching, if you're with another company, a, a, a little boutique shop, or even some of these big box brands, if you're not building leverage, and again, I don't mean it by employees, a team in an office, that's not leverage, man. That's headache. That's what that, that's what that is. <laughs> if you're not building the form of leverage where you can virtually passively reap the benefits of what you're doing. I just truly believe, and that's why Anastasia got me inspired just a couple of weeks ago. I'm like, man, maybe I should get licensed because I could start directing these agents to a better brand, to a better company, to a better opportunity, because God knows everyone wants it. Everyone wants it. I just truly believe a lot are in the wrong vehicle, you know, and that's how I look at EXP. It's a, it's a vehicle. It's a vehicle to get you to your dreams much faster. And it's not always about financial dreams. It's about, for me to tell you the truth, financial, that's always been number one, but it's my family. It's my little babies. It's my little girl and boy that I have in, in the next next room here working from home. I, I want to be out, out with them, right? I want to be on an island with my wife, just chilling, sipping my ties and doing our thing at 2, 8, 2 p.m., right? Like mm-hmm. during the day, like when, when everybody's at work. So it's, it's, it's those little things. And, and that's why even with you, Anastasia, it's like, man, to be you're not even, it's like, dude, you're not even a full year in. Can you imagine where you're going to be in five years with the, with the leverage that you're building? Like, and that's why I tell people all the time when it comes to passive income, that's what we're talking about. Building a team and being able to make an override of people, leveraging people at work, right? That's leverage. That's passive income. And a lot of times we think that we have to be freaking super seven, eight figure type of passive income. This brings brings me back to what I told you a couple weeks ago when I'm teaching you YouTube. And I'm like, dude, do you understand with, with my YouTube channel, that's a form of passive income because these videos that I put up, YouTube pays us on these ads that are running in between the video. That yeah. passive income that I have, which is just a few hundred at this point, that gets me fired up because it's passive income. That little money pays for so much stuff in my life. So it's like with with you guys that are watching, it's like, we're not talking passive income of eight figures. What would an extra thousand dollars a month in, what would an extra 500 a month do to you or your family financially if you just had this passive income coming in, right? So it doesn't have to be a crazy number. Something small is game changing, right? Life changing. Think about, you know, with revenue share, um, you know, my projections for by 2025, I should have over 500 agents, right? Those are my projections for 2025. With that kind of a number, you're talking about a passive income, making money while I sleep, while they're out pounding the pavement. You're talking about a number around five figures or more. And I've seen it. 
because people that are in my upline, that's what they're making. It's five figures off of that. That is passive income. That is the income you want. And the thing is, is that we actually get ownership at our brokerage, you know, while I'm out here and doing all of this stuff and I'm gaining ownership because we are on the NASDAQ. So I have, I own a portion of this brokerage each and every time I sell a house, each and every time, you know, I have a new agent that does their first transaction. There are all of these options where I actually get ownership within this company. And if you take a look at history, really, let's talk about taxis. Do you really hear that much about taxis anymore? No, because a cloud-based system took over the lifts, right? They took over those kind of companies. Let's talk about shopping, cloud-based takeover. Amazon took over, right? Nobody's as big as Amazon anymore. So when you're looking at these kinds of things, cloud-based programs are starting just to take over the world. And that's essential. We are a cloud-based brokerage. Where do you think this is going? You know, people want to have that flexibility and that freedom. They want to be able to work from anywhere, anywhere they're at. We have that flexibility now, right? And because we have taken the competition out of real estate, because I don't have to compete with my business partners, we all elevate each other because I, if they get a deal, I'm still making money, right? If I get a deal, everybody above me, seven people above me, they're making money. We don't have to compete with each other for every transaction anymore. And oftentimes I refer transactions to my team. I don't need to take those on, they can. And in that, we've stopped the competition. So what does that leave with us with? Well, if I wanna go into, and actually this is happening, I wanna take a month off. I'm gonna go and take some time with my daughter and we're just gonna go and take a month, do some traveling, see family, chase the sunshine. I can do that because I know that I can fall back and my team is going to love taking over those transactions. They're gonna eat it up and I'm still making money off of it. If you spend your, you get paid a commission check, right? I sell a house, I get paid a commission check. You spend that commission check, it's gone. Well, I don't have that problem anymore because I'm not chasing the next commission anymore. What I'm chasing is income coming in month after month after month because I am showing them all how to be successful how to do what they want to do in real estate and how to achieve it and then how to duplicate it, right? Because I want to see them grow too. I want to see them making money while they sleep. So I want that to them to learn how to duplicate this exact system. And everybody above me wants to see the same thing. I was on a meeting today with two of the people that are above me, one of which she has 600 in her downline now. And then above her, he has... 2,000 people, 2,000 agents in his downline now. On his personal structured team, 75 agents. That isn't possible as one solo person. It's not. Like, that's exhausting. You'll never spend time with your family. You're never going to see your friends. You're never going to, your, your excuses are always going to be, I have work. He doesn't have to have those excuses anymore because he has people that are all partnered together and collaborating to help delegate out some of those things and kind of even out the workload so it doesn't always have to fall to his shoulder. That is what this is about. You know, that is what we're building here. We're building collaboration and building passive income opportunities that really as agents, we only dreamed of. I mean, there's this ongoing joke. I've heard so many of the old, older agents, you know, that say real estate agents don't retire, they die. That doesn't have to be the case anymore. And it shouldn't. That's, that's a sad, sad thing. And that is what we're aiming to change. And, you know, the projection for, for our brokerage, it's really, to me, I look at it, you know, we're at 64,000 agents right now. We're at 19 countries and growing. Um, and the projections are that within the next seven to 10 years, we're at a million agents. Well, I honestly, I don't think it'll take that long. I'll be honest with you. I really think they'll probably do it in five to seven years, just based on our growth chart right now. But those kind of numbers, to me, it's not really so much of a matter of when someone or if someone's going to come over, it's a matter of when they're going to come over because we are breaking the mold and everybody can see it and everybody knows it. You know, they're, they're looking going, whoa, how can we keep up with them? And where are our brokerage models being duplicated already? Because people see what this gives agents. It, it is back to being agent owned. You're back to having the power as an agent instead of it being, you know, 
as an agent, you're at the bottom of the tier and above you is your, you know, your broker, your designated broker, your broker owner, then shareholders, and then, you know, whoever's the company old owner way, way above that. And all of, all of those, you're nickel and dimed all the way down. So when you're looking at getting shares of that kind of thing, you're not getting, you get, like I said, pennies instead of really getting that money put back into your pocket. And that's, I mean, that just, it, it, that fires me up every time, every time, because I look and go, you know what, financial freedom, it isn't just one of those things that I'm going, oh, will it be, will it be, it's when is it going to happen, and I'm making it happen. And the best part is, yeah. when I'm, if something were to happen to me, and this really, this one, I was like, oh, this is it for me. If something were to happen to me, everything I've built, it gets moved to my daughter. All she has to do wow. is hold a state license. So if something you know, you never know what can happen in the world, but if something did, she's going to continue to bring in that monthly income just by holding a real estate. Business. She won't ever have to sell a house in her whole life, but I can will her that whole revenue share, all of it. If I could press a button right now, a bomb just went off right now, Anastasia. That was like, that was like, that, that, that's the icing on the cake. The fact that you can will it to your family. That's crazy. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. That's generational wealth. What more could we hope for for our children, for our children's children? What more could we hope for? If I'm leaving this world, I want to make sure that I'm leaving my daughter in the best position possible. I don't want her to have to struggle. I don't want, you know, I don't want to ever see any of those things happen to her. I want her to know that the sky's the limit and she'll have the financial flexibility to do that, do whatever she wants. Anastasia, you have no idea, man. You give me the chills over here. I am so fired up for you. I'm so fired up for the industry. I'm like I said, you got me so inspired to go out there and get my own damn license. Like I really want to jump. <laughs> I can't in wait. I'm so excited for you. I can't wait for yes. it. Yes. And that's why today we're where we're at, you guys. It's it, it's virtual. We're now in this digital economy, right? Social media is one thing, but really trying to really leverage it and build a brand with a company that's also in the cloud. That's another thing as well. So I encourage all of you guys, reach out to Anastasia. We'll have links right below in the description. Reach out to her, ask her questions, right? Ask her questions, pick her brain and, 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 and make sure you follow. Because again, I, 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 I'm not no fortune teller or psychic, but I can kind of read trends and I, and I can kind of see where things are going. And I just know Anastasia is on, she's on, she's on the train and that train is going super, super fast. It's a freaking jet. It's a freaking rocket ship, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm super fired up for you, Anastasia. Thank you so much for taking the time today. Where can everybody else find you? If it's not the links in the description, where, where are you big? I know you're big on YouTube. I know you're big on Facebook. Where can people find you as well? Yep. So, um, on all state, on all social media platforms, best Washington properties, best WA Properties on YouTube, Anastasia Narayan. Make sure you like and subscribe. I'd love to connect on there for sure. And, you know, new agents, come and find me because I have so much to pour into you. I know we touched a lot on really, you know, the more advanced stuff, but let's talk about all of the new agent things too, because you guys, you're an underserved population. Let's get you going. Let's, let's build rock stars. That's what I'm here. That's what I'm for. I love it. I love it. Anastasia, thank you so much for your time. You guys thank subscribe, you. like, share the heck out of this video, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Over and out.